your choice. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. Kid Harrington was talking more about the Game of Thrones Jon Snow sequel, so we'll break it all down. I know there's lots of questions about what's going on because there was all this news about Game of Thrones sequels and prequels that they had canceled or paused development on in some that were continuing. They are still working on a bunch of them. I'll explain which ones were canceled and which ones are continuing. If you're brand new to the channel, of course I will do videos for all of them just like I did for the original Game of Thrones series, just like I'm doing for the House of the Dragon episodes. They're getting ready to film House of the Dragon Season 2 as we speak right now as of me posting this video. It sounds like that's probably going to wind up being released in either spring or summer 2024 though. I'm not expecting them to release House of the Dragon Season 2 until next year. But this is Kit Harrington talking about his Game of Thrones Jon Snow sequel. There's, there's rumors out there that there's a, there's a Game of Thrones spinoff yeah. that features your character, Jon Snow. <laughs> I can't say anything on that. Is it, is it happening? Well, I don't know. Do you, uh, you want to have? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I do want to have it. You know, I get recognized a little less nowadays. And... <laughs> Oh, wow. And it kind of hurts my ego, you know. And we can see a Game of Thrones spinoff right now with Jon Snow. All right, we'll do this together. We'll do it together. The reason why he's joking about it there is because they just had a convention where he was talking about the character and like where he would pick up next, like things that they didn't address during the main Game of Thrones series that they would potentially address in this future Jon Snow sequel after the events of the main series. I think if you asked him, he, th he would have felt he got off lightly. He, you know, at the end of the show, when we find him in that cell, he's preparing to be beheaded. And he wants to be. He's done. Like, the fact he goes to the wall is the greatest gift to him. And also the greatest curse. He's got to go back up to the place with all this history and live out his life thinking about how he killed Danny. And live out his life thinking about Egret dying and live out his life thinking about how he hung Ollie, and live out his life thinking about all of this trauma. And that, that's interesting. So I think that the, when we leave him at the end of the show, there's always this feeling of like, I think we wanted some kind of little smile, things are okay. He's not okay. <laughs> He's not okay. But it, it really goes down quite deeply to John's internal conflict, which is that he doesn't know who he is. He's never known who he is. He knows, he, first he identified with being a bastard, uh, but he kind of wanted to be a Stark. And though by the end of the show, he, there's this Targaryen thing thrown in as well. And we don't really see what is, um, uh, where we don't get time to see where that sits with him. Um, but I, I think that he doesn't, he's never really known, he's been told who he is all through his life. Been told who he could be, who he should be. He's actually quite far away from knowing who, who and hasn't had time in our show to really center upon who John is. He doesn't have time to do that, I, but I think He's Jon Snow. He's not Jon Stark, and he's not Jon Targaryen. He's Jon Snow. He's really just talking about the simple stuff. Like, that's just the beginning. The whole idea that he never really figured out who he was. They really brushed over that during the original series just because they blew through the final season so quickly. But it is one of the Game of Thrones sequels, prequel series that they're continuing to develop. The reason why things aren't moving so quickly, like the reason why you don't hear people talking about all these sequels and prequels more, is because of the big Warner Brothers Discovery merger last year. The big debacle that happened with that, like things were getting cancelled left and right. You probably heard about a bunch of people's favorite shows and movies just outright being wiped from HBO Max. At the time, they were trying to wipe $3 billion of debt off of their books as part of the merger. And because of that, George R. R. Martin said that even the Game of Thrones people at HBO who are in charge of developing all these sequels and prequels and even working on House of the Dragon are big revenue drivers. Like, all of them love all the Game of Thrones stuff because it's a huge money earner for them. Even they were told to slow down on the development of a lot of their sequels and prequels. Just because it takes hundreds of millions of dollars just to get one of the shows off the ground and originally, like before all the big buyout nonsense, when they still had tons of money and they were developing a bunch of shows all at the same time. 
AT&T basically told HBO that they wanted to get to a point where there were two, like multiple Game of Thrones series on the air in the same year. So it would have been a situation where you have like House of the Dragon season two and season one of the Jon Snow sequel. Now, basically what's happened is they've slowed that down. So it's more like one series per year. There might be a point where they get to two Game of Thrones series per year. That'd be fantastic, but I'm not expecting it anytime soon. Don't hold your breath on that. It would mean HBO spending about a half a billion dollars every year to get 20 episodes of television out. The new Warner Brothers CEO is like, please don't do that. Please don't spend a half a billion dollars. Spend like half of that. Also, what's going on right now is that George R. R. Martin just literally has to help them write more canon material that they would base the Jon Snow sequel on because he's not going to let them make a bad show. Like after the main show ended, he re-signed a new contract to develop more shows for HBO in the Game of Thrones universe. And as part of that contract, he has way more say, way more power in what actually happens. In fact, for House of the Dragon, he actually worked with Ryan Condal, the showrunner, to develop the show before they brought it to HBO. Like, he's the one that went to Ryan Condal and said, you come on and you develop this House of the Dragon series with me. Then they went to HBO and George R. R. Martin said, why don't you do this show, my idea, let's turn this into a series instead of that Blood Moon idea. For the most part, George R. R. Martin is helping them develop all the shows, but some of them he's more involved in than others. So the ones that he's involved in have a much better chance of actually making it to screen. And one of the big surprises of the Jon Snow sequel is that it was actually Kit Harington's idea. He's the one who put a team together and then brought the idea to HBO. Like, hey, you know, I kind of want to do a sequel. Can we do that? And HBO was like, hell yes, we'll do that. There have been several ideas for Game of Thrones sequels with the main actors, like an Arya show set with her going west of Westeros. Like, what happens to her after the events of the ending? The general rule of thumb is that any of the Game of Thrones sequels or spinoff series that are centered around one of the original main characters from the original series have priority over a lot of the lesser ideas for prequel series that they have. Like, oh, a bunch of the original actors want to come back. All right, let's fast track that idea. But because it takes George R. R. Martin so long to write new material, like we've been waiting for Winds of Winter for over a decade now, and because of them pinching pennies at HBO, it's just going to take them a little bit longer to actually work this idea out. They also haven't said that this Jon Snow sequel would be a one-off, like it'd be a limited series, or it would continue on for multiple seasons. I've already addressed their plan for the House of the Dragon series. They've actually turned that into like a much bigger idea. Originally, it was just going to be its own small show set around the Dance of the Dragons, but they basically turned it into a fire and blood show that will cover the events of many different eras of the Targaryen history, and they'll just continue to call it House of the Dragon. So even though House of the Dragon might only take them up to like three or four seasons, when they get to season four or season five, they'll treat it like an anthology series, recast some of the actors, and do the Blackfire Rebellion, and so on and so forth throughout their history, backwards and forwards. That's how they'd also do Aegon's Conquest. They've talked about doing Aegon's Conquest as part of the House of the Dragon, but they would probably wait till after they're done with the Dance of the Dragons. I'll go down the list of all of them explaining which ones were confirmed to still be going, which ones were just delayed a little bit longer, and which ones were outright canceled. First off is House of the Dragon. Of course they're still making it, like I literally just talked about it. They're filming season two really soon. Ryan Condal, the showrunner, said that they specifically referenced The Crown on Netflix as a show that would jump through time with different actors playing characters. So they're just going to continue doing that for many different time periods, many different events in the Targaryen history. That's how you get 10 plus seasons of House of the Dragon. They treat it more like an anthology. The next one they're still making is the Jon Snow Game of Thrones sequel. This is true basically for any sequel show starring one of the core main characters from the original series. Arya Stark is another example. Maisie Williams is like, well, yeah, they come up with a good enough idea. Of course, I'll come back and I'll do an Arya series. After the original show ended, there had been talk of doing an Arya series at some point for her adventures on the Western continent, like what's west of Westeros? What did she do when she left on that ship? The only thing about the Jon Snow series is they probably just delayed it for a little while and won't actually start filming it till they announce producers, directors, or some supporting cast. So I'm not expecting them to start filming this year or even next year. Like they probably don't want to air multiple Game of Thrones series at the same time right now. The next big one is another House of the Dragon based series. So Ryan Condal, showrunner of the House of the Dragon, said that before he started working on the series right now with George R. R. Martin, he was actually pitching HBO a Tales of Dunkin Egg series. Since he jumped to House of the Dragon, it's been an enormous success for them. They're making like a billion seasons of it at this point. What they'll probably do is just slot in the Tales of Dunkin Egg as one of the events that they cover later on in the timeline. Might be a long time before they actually cover it, but they're still probably planning on doing it within the House of the Dragon larger idea. The events of Duncan Egg follow Sir Duncan the Tall, who's the ancestor of Brienne of Tarth, and Egg, the future Aegon V, King of Westeros, but when he was a boy. 
They reference him during the original series. Egg is Maester Aemon's younger brother. That's how old Maester Aemon is. He's ancient. He references him when he died. The other cool thing about Maester Aemon in Egg's backstory is that there's a little bit of crossover with the Blood Raven who became the Three-Eyed Raven. They'll probably cover his backstory during a future season of House of the Dragon when they cover the Blackfire Rebellions. There's a Sea Snake series about Corlys Valerian's Nine Voyages set earlier in his life, so it would be a much younger actor playing the character. All the artifacts that they featured around the High Tide Castle, and they featured them pretty prominently, are meant to be trophies that he took from each of his nine famous voyages around the world. They're mostly taken from parts of Essos that we haven't seen on any of the series, like the original Game of Thrones series or House of the Dragon yet. They've been talking about this series like it's a completely different thing, like not part of the larger House of the Dragon type of series. What they've probably done is just delayed it indefinitely. It sounds like they still plan on making it eventually, but not for a long time. There's a Princess Nymeria in the 10,000 Ships series. They even teased that they were planning on doing it during House of the Dragon episode one. The page that Rhaenyra and Allison are reading from in that book, as Rhaenyra tears it out of the book, is the story of Nymeria in the 10,000 Ships. Later during House of the Dragon episode 10, Allison actually sends her the page back as a sign of their former friendship. Like, I kept this page the whole time. Nymeria is meant to be this really inspirational figure to a lot of women in Westeros, particularly to Rhaenyra, because she was a woman of great power who's remembered for doing very great things. Originally, she was a princess from the Reuner people over here in Essos. They were pushed out of their ancestral homeland by the ancient Valerians during the expansion of the Freehold. They retreated with the 10,000 ships to Westeros, landing in Dorne and conquering the area. The Martells descend from her line, which is part of the reason why the Martells have hated the Targaryens and the Crown for so long. They didn't bend the knee during Aegon's conquest and only joined the other six kingdoms as part of Westeros much, much later in the timeline, well after the events of the Dance of the Dragons. There was a series about the Golden Empire set in the distant past long before the rise of the Valyrian Freehold set in Yi Ti, this country over here in eastern Essos. It sounds like it was one of the series that they delayed indefinitely, like effectively canceled. Maybe it will come back in some form in the distant future. There was a series set in Flea Bottom after the events of House of the Dragon, but before the main series. Flea Bottom is this area of King's Landing that we visited several times on the main series and on House of the Dragon. Damon spends a lot of his time there whoring around, as does Aegon II. I believe they canceled this. I don't think they're planning on making a Flea Bottom series anymore. There was also the infamous Blood Moon prequel series that they canceled a long time ago. It was set before the first long night thousands of thousands of years ago. This was the famous pilot that they spent $30 million filming only to cancel it after seeing the finished version. It wasn't that it was bad or anything like that, like they still made a very good episode of television. It's just that HBO came up with a stronger idea that they felt like would earn them more money ultimately or be more popular, which was House of the Dragon. There were also a couple adult animation based Game of Thrones series they were working on. George R. R. Martin said he was really excited about them, but they were treated more like Love, Death, and Robots, where each episode had different styles of animation telling different stories. It sounded like it would have been really cool. But this is also one of the ones that they've canceled, because if you haven't seen the news, Warner Brothers has been canceling stuff left and right, like I said, to save money. But of all the stuff they've been canceling, the stuff they've been quickest to cancel has been the animation. As we get more information about some of these other sequels and prequels over the next couple of years, of course, I'll continue to do videos for them and for House of the Dragon Season 2 as we get more footage from the set. Everyone click here for my House of the Dragon Season 2 teaser video and learn about some of the new characters they're introducing. And click here for my Game of Thrones alternate ending and deleted scenes video. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.